I am a truck driver, and I will never pick up another hitchhiker again. From a young age, I was told to never talk to strangers, and through my childhood, I never did. However, in adult life, things change. There is more reason to talk to people you don't know, especially when lonely. When I became a truck driver, the long and empty roads got the better of me, and I'd start giving lifts to hitchhikers who were going to the same place I was. It was the perfect solution for my loneliness, and often, I would become friends with the people I gave lifts to. My job was absolutely perfect until that one November night. I had dropped off my cargo at the designated warehouse and was on my way back to the depot. It was going to be a long drive through the night. A few hours into the drive, I saw a man at the side of the road with a black bag and a plaque reading the exact same place I was going. Usually, past a certain point, I would ignore it and continue my journey. But something about this man made me feel like I owed it to him, and I could do with some company on the journey anyway. I pulled over, opened my window, and asked him where he was going, even though I had already read the sign. He just pointed at his black and looked up at me. Something about him made me uneasy, but it was too late now, and I told him to hop in. This was a huge mistake. The man climbed in and sat in the passenger seat. He was dressed completely in black, with a silver chain spilling out of the top pocket of his overcoat. At first I was hesitant. Then I got myself together and shook his hand. It was cold. Very cold. Not the kind of cold when it has been chilly outside, but the kind when someone has a fever. A wet, clammy, unnatural cold. I looked at his face. He looked like he was in his late fifties with a gray beard and harsh eyes that put you in your place. I cleared my throat and introduced myself. He sent back a rough mumble that didn't sound like a name. All I said was, pleased to meet you, and got back onto the road. I decided it was best not to try to talk too much to the man unless he talked first. He didn't look like the kind of guy you'd want to say the wrong thing to. After a couple of minutes, I began to notice he was constantly rummaging inside the bag. It was making a rather unnerving clinking sound of metal hitting other metal. After an hour of driving, the man had not stopped rummaging inside the bag. I had also noticed that he had been staring at me for some time, which was creeping me out massively. It really made my skin crawl. On most occasions, if I have a passenger who is not particularly communicative, I would put on the radio. But mine had stopped working last week, and I still needed to get it fixed. In an effort to stop him staring at me, I asked him, what's in the bag? I immediately regretted it. He looked right at me and said in a raspy voice, mind your own business. I was slightly shocked by this and tried to pass it off as a bit of a sarcastic joke, although I knew for sure it wasn't. Throughout the journey, the rummaging got louder and louder and he started making stranger noises in an extremely low tone. 
I was so unsettled I began thinking of what to do. I could not go another three hours with this man in my truck. He was now clanging whatever was in his bag very hard. He then stopped and started scraping what sounded like a knife against something else. I had had enough and pulled into the side of the road. I didn't want to confront this guy but asked him once more, what's in the bag? Once again he responded with, mind your own business. I nodded and said that we had a puncture on the back tire and asked him if he'd mind checking it out whilst I got the repair kit. He looked at me with a look of complete hatred, then got out of the truck and went round the back. I put my foot on the gas and drove. I saw him in my taillights stare after me with what looked like a smile spread across his face. His hands looked like they were covered in blood. I still see that image every time I close my eyes. I make it back to the depot, trying desperately to forget the man. Then I realized he had left his bag. Obviously, I could not help but look in it, but I wish I hadn't. The bag was full of different metal objects, all of them looking like some kind of torture device from knives and shackles to ropes and bars and then realized they were all covered in blood. I don't know why I didn't turn the bag into the police but I thought that because I had my fingerprints on it it would not end well for me. I took the bag home and did some searching through it and to my horror at the bottom of the bag was a picture of my truck, a picture of the registration, and a picture of me holding the bag. I could hardly sleep, but in the end I managed to get a few hours. I definitely couldn't go to the police now. It looked like the bag belonged to me, but I decided that I had to. I put the bag in a box and was about to walk out of the door when I noticed something. The picture of me holding the bag was nailed into the door with a note attached. All it read was, Mind your own business.